declare to you, church, those mountains that are a hindrance, that obscure your view of heaven, that obscure your view of righteousness, that obscure your view of the grace of God. Every mountain that obscures your view of success, the Lord said you will be the head and not the tail. Every obscurity causing mountain, the Holy Ghost will level them up. They will be leveled. Remember, you wake up. It's like a morning. You wake up, you don't find that mountain. You wake up, that problem is vanished entirely. Because of what the Lord is saying here. And he said that, it, that the glory of the Lord. Now, righteousness before, but the glory of the Lord is following you behind. So the glory of the Lord shall be your real reward. The enemy who wants to come behind you and backstab you, he sees the glory of the Lord. As we speak about this, remember the children of Israel. As they were exiting Egypt, you are exiting from Egypt. You have exited from Egypt. You, are, you have left Egypt. I pronounce you have left Egypt. As I pronounce, by the virtue of you waiting on the Lord this month, you have left Egypt. Is it that the that Pharaoh will not pursue? They may pursue. They may be incensed. They may be incensed. But those who are incensed against you, the Lord is saying they shall fall for you. Please turn with me. Turn with me. We're going to pray. We're going to go in the realm of prayer, the realm of thanksgiving, the realm of petition. You know, this, this night, turn with me to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 41. Isaiah 41 verse 10. The Bible said, verse 8, But thou, Israel, you are my servant. Jacob, I have chosen you. The seed of Abraham, my friend. Look at that relationship. The Lord is saying, Israel, you are my servant. Put your name there. I want you to put your name. What is your name? You are the servant of the Lord. Now, do you know you're the servant of the Lord? Do you know you've been chosen by the Lord? The seed of Abraham, and I claim that. I am of the seed of Abraham. The Lord said, you're my friend. Also think about it this way. Your children who are your seed, by virtue of your relationship with God, they are the friend of God. This year, new life, new Christian experiences, new uh, salvation experiences, genuine salvation experiences, sanctification experiences. Our children will operate in the realm of the Spirit this year. Now, our children will be filled with the Holy Ghost, operating in the realm of the Holy Ghost, untouchable, speaking in new tongues in the name of Jesus. Why? Because they're the friend of the Lord. He said, Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth, and call thee from the chief men thereof, and said unto thee, Thou art my servant, I have chosen thee, and not cast thee away. You know, in the past you thought you were cast away. In the past you thought God was never there for you. By virtue of you depriving yourself of basic things, basic distractions, you put away food, you put yourself away from the pleasure, and then you were seeking the Lord. You were seeking the face of the Lord. And the person, I know many of you here were getting divine revelation during this period of waiting on the Lord. Can I hear, get a witness in the house? You're here in the house, you've, you've been enjoying divine revelation during the time of waiting on the Lord. Can I hear a loud amen in the house? Your eyes have been opened better during this period of waiting on the Lord. Can I hear an amen in the house? During the period of waiting on the Lord, you've drawn closer to the Lord. Can I hear an amen in the house? You picked on certain scriptures that you, you thought were meaningless, but the Lord breathed on those scriptures, and then they began to make new meaning, give you new significance. And then you say, well, I never saw this like this. And for many of you, new wine in your family. In the name of Jesus Christ. He said, thou whom the Lord, whom I have taken from the ends of the earth, and called thee from the chief men thereof, and said unto thee, thou art my servant, I have chosen thee, and not cast thee away. Verse 10, everybody, if you are in the house, I want you to read verse 10 with me after the count of two. One, two. Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. This is a year of strength. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Somebody here has been lifted up to the next level. Somebody here has been promoted spiritually. Somebody here has been taken to the mountain top. Say mountain top. Now the mountain top, there you are promoted. At the mountain top is a place of advantage. Verse 11. I want you to read verse 11. 
as we go to the Lord, we prepare to go to the Lord in prayer. Verse 11, everybody. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Enemy, we're not done with you. We are going to put you under. We're going to put our legs on your head. You are angry that God lifted us up, right? Now you have been incensed. You are angry. You're mad, right? The Lord, is, the Lord has a final warning for you. Moses is, uh, sorry, Pharaoh is pursuing. But they already delivered from Egypt. He said, I must go. Ah, all my economic advantage is gone. All my capital, human capital is gone. All my social capital is gone. All my captivity capital is gone. Every capital, everything, the number is gone. But no, 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 no. I'm not going to let them go. Today is the last day of the month of January. You are delivered. You have to sit on the, on, your, on the chair. I say you are delivered. I say you are delivered. I am delivered. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I am delivered by his word. Once I was bound by the chains of Satan, but now I am delivered. Praise the Lord. Now sing like you mean. Praise the Lord. I am delivered. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I am delivered by his word. Once I was bound by the chains of Satan, but now I am delivered. Praise the Lord. The one who was bound is no longer bound. The one who was in captivity is no longer captive. Now, there's a divine revelation right here. I am no longer captive. I am no longer bound. And so, I have the power to bind. I have the power now to chain every problem. I have the power. And Pharaoh said, no. For you forgotten how I dealt with you guys in Egypt? No, I am still the master. Go, Pharaoh, you are not my master. Jesus is my master. God is my master. I can't serve two masters. Declare that here today. I can't serve two masters. You will only serve God. This year, you will only serve God. Now, those who want to strive with God, God will put them where they belong. They that were incensed against thee, they were mad, drunken with madness and anger. I can't believe they've made such uh, enormous progress. I can't believe that this one is promoted. I can't believe this one is on the mountaintop. I can't believe you mean you are my servant and you are a slave. You are, look at your skin color. Look at who you, look at everything about you. Who are you? You are an immigrant. Look at you. You are a pauper. Your parents are paupers. Look at you. You've been sick. Aren't you a sickler? Look at you. No, I am not any of those things. My story and testimony has changed. Now I want you to open your mouth and declare, my situation has changed. I am no longer the same person. I have changed my garments. I have changed my estate. Now open. Our God, who can strive with our God, the mighty are fallen. But Lord God, those who were Lord slaves and captives have you lifted up? Those who were Lord in the valley of obscurity have you lifted up? Lord God, at the beginning of January, in January 1, many of you were like rusted people, rusted dry bones, and the spirit of the Lord breathed on you dry bones came alive. I am seeing people here, people here who have been brought alive. People here, dry bones that have been brought alive. Open your mouth because you are no longer in the valley of indecision. Open your mouth, you are no longer in the valley of dry bones. You are no longer in the valley of death. 
You are no longer in the valley of despondency. You are no longer in the valley of failure. You are no longer in the valley. Say, Lord, I am no longer in the valley. I praise you. I worship you. I exalt you because, oh God, I am no longer in the valley. I am no longer in the valley, oh God, of failure. I am no longer in the valley of despondency. I am no longer in the valley. How I worship you, Father. How I exalt your holy name. 31st of January. Lord God, I've come out of obscurity. I've come out from the effect of failure. I've come out from the Lord, from the valley of dry bones. The word of God was given. Can these bones live? And Lord God, your servant said, thou knowest. And Lord God, by virtue of that response, you know when you responded to God by salvation, when you said, Lord, I accept you as my Lord and Savior, there was a, a change of place. There was a change of place. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I exalt your name. I magnify your name. Who is like unto thee, O God? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to open your mouth and say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for what you have started to do in our lives. Thank you, Jesus, for that which you began to do in our families. Thank you, Jesus. Glory and honor to your name, O God. Thank you, Jesus. When you said, Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Power chain hands. When you said, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord. Power chain hands. Father, I thank you for the salvation of my soul. I thank you for giving me a new life. You say, if any man is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Lo, behold, all things are become new. Father, Lord, I bless your name because all things are become new. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name we we'll pray. In Jesus' name we we'll pray. Can I hear a good amen in the house? Can we hear a heaven-bound amen in the house? Can we hear an amen that is about to bring down blessings from heaven? An amen that is about to cause the rain? Brethren, there's going to be showers of blessings. Mercy drops around us are falling. But right now, there is going to be an open heaven. There is going to be an outpouring. Outpouring of rain. Outpouring of rain. On what? Your faith. When he comes, he's going to find faith in the house. The Spirit of God is moving. He is moving. Is he going to find faith in the house? He is moving. Is he going to find faith in the house? You know, let me tell you something. Those who are incensed against you, they are at disadvantage. They cannot prevail. Let me tell you what happened to you. When you gave your life to Jesus, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. For Christ also had once suffered for sins and just for the unjust. The enemy knew me as an unjust person. He knew me as a sinner. He knew me as somebody heading for hell. He micromanaged me. He remote controlled me. He manipulated me. He manipulated perhaps you with lust, with anger. He manipulated you with sin. He manipulated you in time past with women. He manipulated you in time past with men. He manipulated you with the things of this world, with the pleasure of this world. Perhaps he's manipulating, uh, he's manipulating uh, what do you call that? His uh, oppression is by what? Is by sickness. Look at what the Bible says. For Christ also had once suffered. So why will I suffer this year? Ask yourself that question. Why should I suffer this year? Ask yourself a question of faith. Why should I suffer this year? Ask yourself with life, why should I suffer this year? No, I want you to ask yourself. You're not really asking yourself. People, believers, we're here to do business. Why should I suffer this year? Christ wants suffered. Everybody say, Christ wants suffered for sins. The wages of sin is death. I will not die. Christ once suffered for sins. Sickness is linked to sins. I will not be sick. Christ once suffered for sins. Poverty is linked to sin. I shall not be poor. Ah, some of you, your mouth is, your mouth is not saying anything. I say I shall not be poor. No, January 1 to 31st, you were keeping quiet, praying in your house, in your closet. We are here to declare our victory. We are here to declare the victory of Jesus. We are here, we are here. If you want to jump, jump. If you want to run, run. As somebody that's been liberated, I want you to declare Christ once suffered. For whose sins? For my sins. Therefore, 
Say, therefore, I will no longer be in captivity. I will no longer be in the valley. Christ won't suffer for my sins. Now begin to put words. Begin to, say, begin to substitute. Begin to substitute. When Jesus died on the cross, there was a substitution. A substitution. A power change. A transformation. I call that spiritual transformer. The grace of God appeared to somebody here. Grace transformed you from disgrace to the realm of grace. Grace brings favor. Grace brings mercy. Grace brings promotion. Grace brings, it brings the goodness of God, abundant life. Now open your mouth and begin to mention those things that have been transformed. Those things that have been replaced in your life, in your family. Everything that grace brings, Christ won't suffer. Hear me, kingdom of darkness. Christ won't suffered. Christ once suffered on the cross of Calvary. Open your eyes, Satan. He is no longer in the grave. Jesus is risen. Jesus is risen because Jesus is risen from the grave. I will not operate in the valley of sin. I will not operate in the valley of compromise. Christ once suffered. Now, open your mouth, open your eyes, and behold Jesus. Behold the sacrifice. Behold. Now, look at what Jesus said on the cross. It is finished. It is finished. Now, open your mouth and say, it is finished. Open your mouth and say, it is finished. It is finished. This problem in my life, it is finished. This failure in my life, it is finished. This defeat in my life, compromise, finished. Now, it looks like I'm putting words in your mouth. I am not going to fight for you for your destiny. I am not going to be you. Now, open your mouth and fight for your destiny. Open your mouth and declare victory in your destiny. Open your own mouth. Open your own mouth. You are the, you are the prophet over your life. I don't care how much prayer I pray for you. If you don't have faith, if you don't pass a decree here today, if you don't pass, remember those who incensed. The Lord has brought damnation. The Lord has brought faith. The Lord has lifted them. The activity of the works of darkness, perhaps in the dream, perhaps in the realm of the spirit, perhaps they never manifest, but you know they're walking. You know they're walking. Declare Christ once suffered. Look, 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 look. When Jesus was in the grave, the devil was laughing. When Jesus was going, through the garden of Gethsemane, the garden of Gethsemane, he, the enemy was laughing and rejoicing. The enemy was like, "I got him, I got him." Isn't that what the enemy is telling you today? I got her, I got him. But well, maybe I couldn't get him, but I got his children. Oh, 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 righteous man, but I got your finance. The enemy was saying, "I got his family. He is far from serving God, but I got him. I got him in the area of health." I got him in the area of uh, business. I got him in the area of sickness. I got him in the area of his job. Uh, Satan, hear me. Christ once suffered. Once. Once. Everybody say once. On the cross of Calvary. On the cross of Calvary. And he decreed on the cross. It is finished. Bring, hear me. Hear me. You are victorious this year. Every battle of this year, I declare, it is finished. Now help me, help me, help me, church. Every battle of this year, I want you to declare with me, it is I'm even shouting louder than many of you. I'm one person here today. But I know I have brothers in the house. I know I have sisters in faith in the house. That's how the church can, pro can progress. That's how the church can survive. If we don't declare, the church will go if we don't stand in the gap the bible said the kingdom of god starts with violence the violent will take it by force now church i want you to re-echo with me it is stagnation stagnation in number stagnation in soul winning hear us it is oh blood of jesus blood of jesus that blots out every ordinance from the pit of hell sickness hear me the ordinance of sickness, it is. Don't worry, don't worry. February, March, April, 
you will every month that comes your way it will be like morning your light will shine your light will shine your light will shine your light will shine pharaoh hear me it is go tell pharaoh let my people go when that message came that was when the battle was over yes pharaoh was busy fighting don't worry god each the longer he fought the more shame and disgrace is coming his way pharaoh was incensed like the bible said but look christ once suffered if god fought for them in the old testament fought for them before jesus even came now we are in the era of grace grace will fight i said grace will fight grace will fight in the name of jesus he said that he might bring us to god being put to death in the flesh but quickened by the spirit this makes me to realize that jesus has been quickened by the spirit your spiritual life is quickened by the spirit your prayer life is quickened you were struggling to fulfill the ordinance of sanctification now i declare your christian life is quickened by the you're quickened you are quick. Say, I am quick. In the name of Jesus. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. The Bible sheds more light on this. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. The Bible says, For he has made him to be seen for us. Jesus was made to be seen for us. Who knew no sin? Jesus knew no sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God. How can you enter heaven without righteousness? Yet the enemy is trying to pollute you. Yes, the enemy is trying to defile you. Uh, you're going to say, Jesus has been made righteousness for me. My garment is the garment of righteousness. My garment is the garment of righteousness. This year, I will live righteously. Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. You are a miracle walking God. Your name is Yahweh. 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 Your name is Yahweh. You are a miracle walking God. Your name is Yahweh. Now listen to me. Principalities don't understand that song. You are singing your way to victory. And the enemy is wondering, what is, he, what, is, what is he saying? Yahweh, what does Yahweh mean? Like Moses went to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh said, who is that God? He said, I, see, God will not give a name that he can easily comprehend, that, that your enemy may be able to comprehend easily. He said, tell Pharaoh, I am that I am. God will not come down to the level of your enemy. God will not be demoted to your enemy. God will not be demoted to that sickness. See, let God be God. Let man be man. Now open your mouth and say, this year, let God be God. This year, let God be God. This year in my life, let God be God. And let man be man. God will remain God. Yahweh, your name is Yahweh. You are a miracle walking God. Your name is Yahweh. Sing with excitement, people. Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. You are a miracle walking God. Your name is Yahweh. This is the God. Now, let me share testimony with you. You know, this week has been very, 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 very busy for me. You know, lacking a lot of sleep. But I knew I had to be in church today. Ideally, by tiredness, I should sleep at work before coming here. But I said, I have to be in church at the right time. And sleep was battling. Now, God is not going to be re reduce the level of sleeping and slumbering for the enemy to get you. When men slept, things happened. I said, I must be in church. And suddenly, I tripped off. A road where cars never stop, slow down. The angel of God woke me up. And I was just going to hit the car in front. Oh, but I was woken up before time. 
and I out of the with my brake and everything. The brake, pressing the brake will not prevent me from hitting the vehicle. But with the brake, with waking up by God and the brake and dodging, I dodge the enemy. You call that docking, spiritual docking. God will wake you up beforehand. The enemy will not have advantage. After I'm coming to the place of prayer and fasting, why should I be a distraction to the process here today? Why should my story be a negation to what God is doing this year? Listen to me. I use my case, that case as a point of contact. This year, nothing shall by enemy means hurt you. Nothing, open your mouth and say, this year, nothing shall by any means. Now say it like you mean it. This year, nothing shall by any means. The enemy may gather. They may gather, but the spirit of the Lord is going to lift up a standard against every prince of patience, against every power of darkness. Nothing. Now open your mouth and begin to declare. This year, nothing shall by any means hurt me. January, February, March, April to December. Nothing shall by any means hurt me. Nothing shall by any means hurt me. Yahweh, your name is Yahweh. You're a miracle walking God. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. I praise you, Lord. I exalt your holy name. I magnify your holy name. I praise you for what you are doing. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, Lord of Lords. Horse and the rider has it thrown into the sea. You raise a standard against the Prince of Pesha. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Isaiah 59, we're declaring prophecies here. Prophesying, okay. Isaiah 59 verse 19. The Bible says, so shall they fear the name of the Lord. From the what? From the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall do what? Lift up a standard. Lift up a standard. Everybody say, lift up a standard. The Bible said, the enemy shall come like a flood. To wipe you off like a flood. You go look at cases of mishaps that happen. Not that you're better than them in any way. Not that you're more careful than them. Not that you are more privileged in life than them, except for grace and God helping you. The Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard at your place of work this year. The Spirit of the Lord shall lift up what? A standard. Help your mouth and begin to thank the Lord. For he is lifting up a standard against your enemy. Open your mouth and begin to bless the Lord. He is lifting up a holy standard against the enemy in your life. This year, this year, it's a great standard. It's a higher standard. Father, I worship you. Father, I exalt your name. Lord, I magnify your name because you're lifting up a standard. You said the sun shall be no more. You said the sun shall be no more thy light by day. Neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. But the Lord shall be unto thee everlasting light. God, you will be unto me this year everlasting light. Everlasting light. Father, I worship you everlasting light, abundant light. You are going to be my light this year. And the God, thy glory. God, my glory. In Jesus' name we worship. In Jesus' name we worship. Are you going to worship this God? Now, let's make the enemy mad. Let's make him mad. He thought you were under, six feet under. He thought you were in captivity. Paul and Silas, they prayed. They sang. Oh, Paul and Silas, they prayed. Now, before you, okay, listen. Before you sing that song, understand the context in which that song was sung. Paul and Silas were in captivity. They were supposed to be preaching the gospel, but they were held hostage. Perhaps they would have been killed by the Romans, the Roman soldiers. But you know what? Rather than cry, rather than weep, rather than crucify themselves, 
and blame the pastor and blame their husband and blame their wife and blame their children rather than blame the church and blame the country oh i'm i regret coming to america no god is going to bless you in america america is a fruitful place oh why did i even go why did i even study this course god is going to lift somebody up here if you need to redirect refocus god will show you the way to redirect refocus in the name of jesus christ so they were supposed to be moody dl moody but they refused to be called moody instead they jumped into elation paul and silas they pray i perhaps they, i perhaps, i believe they were seeing heaven I perhaps they could see the angels praising and worshiping God. I believe they could see the glory of the Lord. That this God must be praised regardless of infirmities and persecution. That this God must be praised regardless of what condition you may be. And it is praising God that determines what happens after. It is praising God that determines. Hey, look, even if God doesn't show up to deliver you, express way to glory. But that God, the God we serve, is a mighty God. The God we serve. Now open your mouth. I think I'm putting words in your mouth. Don't you know your God? Open your mouth and declare who that God is to you. My God is an awesome God. My God is a glorious God. My God is an unlimited God. And the way you declare, you define your God, the way you define him in your life, that's how the situation is going to bow. The Bible said the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow. And the mention of the name of this God, Elohim, El Shaddai. This God is a great God. This God, and that was what Paul and Silas were doing. They were singing. They were praising God. The prisoners were jealous for a moment. And maybe I need to also be on that chain so I can have this type of joy in my life. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And the prisoners are like saying, even though I don't have chains on my hands, I, I don't have this type of joy. You see, even though you don't have all the things that the people of the world have, you still have joy in your soul. Even though you don't have all this, uh, these cars and buildings and everything all around, but because you have God, there's joy within your soul. So and you are singing and you are praising God and you say God thank you for yesterday thank you for the sunshine thank you for the rain thank you for everything thank you for everything you've done oh God I praise you it may not all look like it is well but thank you and for a moment I don't think I'm in captivity I believe the presence of God is what matters in chains they were praising God. Paul and Silas, they pray, they sign. Hey, listen. The Holy Ghost move is not restricted by chains. The move of the Spirit of God is not limited by chain. It's not limited by condition. And the Holy Ghost came down. And then the chains also were broken. Paul and Silas. Oh, Paul and Silas. Oh, Paul and Silas. Oh, Paul and Silas. If Paul and Silas sang the way you are singing now, will the Holy Ghost come down? Paul and Silas. The Holy Ghost came down. Oh, Paul and Silas. The sun. The Holy Ghost came down. Oh, Mary and Martha. This sun, the Holy Ghost came down. Oh, Paul and Silas, the sun, the Holy Ghost came down. Oh, Paul and Silas, oh, this sun, the Holy Ghost came down. Oh, Paul and Silas. Oh, 
Polar Silent. The song the Holy Ghost came down. Oh, how about you? I will pray. Oh, I will sing the Holy Ghost. Oh, how about you? I sing the Holy Ghost. Oh, how about you? Ah, how about you? They may not be money in the pockets. I will praise God. Oh, how about you? If you have God, you're in the majority. Oh, how about you? Even if your children have deserted you, they will hear the sound, they will come back. Oh, how about you? Oh, how about you? Angels rejoicing. God is about to release his angels. He is about to release light. He, your light is breaking forth. Oh, how about you? Oh, I say, how about you? Bye bye, Satan. Bye bye, wall. Oh, how about you? Your friends have been laughing at you. When will it happen? Ah. Oh, how about you? Oh, how about you? Jam those hands. Jam your hands for the Lord. Jam those hands for the Lord. How about you? I will, pray, I will sing and the Holy Ghost come down. Oh, how about you? and the Holy Ghost come down. Oh, how about you? Listen, they prayed, the chains were still there. They sang, the chains were still there. Then they returned to prayer, the chains were still there. They prayed, they sang, they prayed, they sang, they prayed, they sang. Pa! The chains are gone. The Holy Ghost came down. No need for the prisoners to lose the chains. The God who creates everything and created everything, he sent uh, the minutest of his power, not even his right hand, and broke the chain. The chains are broken. Father, we bless your name. We are just starting. About to move to the next realm. We praise you for bringing us this far. Glory and honor be to your name. Down the 31st of January, a decree is established that we will be free. And that those that were incensed against us can continue to be incensed. But our God shall take all the glory. Your righteousness before us this year. Your glory coming behind. And the enemy is confused. He plots that he's going to raise a standard against the church of God. Deeper life, this see by the grace of God, the Lord is going to lift up a holy standard against your enemy.
Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' name. For in Jesus' name we pray. Are you ready for the next level? Are you tired? We're moving to the next level. Are you ready? Are you ready? Say, I am ready. Say, I am ready to launch the next level. Thank you, Father. Praise the living God. Great things are about to happen here tonight. So if you want to use the restroom just for six minutes, you can go now. Use the restroom and come and be in a prayerful mood. The Lord will surely show himself here tonight in Jesus' name. Tonight, the service is not only for us here, but from all our locations, and they are connecting at 8.30. So we can see how, by the grace of God, this service is really a manifestation of the power of God. We are not the only people that are going to be blessed. But in all our locations, the DMV area, we are going to be blessed in Jesus' name. So let's be in a prayerful mode. You want to use the restroom? Go there quickly and come back. Prepare yourself. Let us be in a prayerful mode. Let's be expectant. Let's be excited tonight. It's a mighty God we are serving. He's an awesome God. He can never fail. And that's why we hold on to him. That's why we are looking up to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. He's a great God we are serving. Brethren, tonight is the night. You must not live here without your miracle. Trust God tonight. It's a wonderful night. This 31st day of the month of January, in the year 2020, it's a great time. Great blessings for us. For this church, we will never be the same as we were in 2019. Our God is ready to lift us up. Be expectant tonight. We just want to bless the name of the Lord. We just want to appreciate him. For many of us, God has done something in our lives. And we couldn't even come out and testify. I know many miracles took place this past 31 days. Our God is faithful. He will never disappoint his children. If we continue to trust him, 
He will always be on our side. Our God is great. He's a mighty God we are serving. He's seen us. He's seen you. What we are going through. What I'm going through. What every one of us is going through. And that's why there's need for us to look up to him at this point in time. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. As Paul the Apostle says, I am what I am, only by the grace of God. Do you know that you are, you are, you are alive at this moment only by the grace of God? Not because you have insurance. Not because you have a good doctor. Not because you have money. It's only by the grace of God. Our God is ready to bless us here tonight. Get ready. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Tonight is your night. Tonight is your night. All the enemies that followed you, pursued you, ran after you till this day, tonight is the night. The night of your liberation, the night of your deliverance, the night of your freedom. Tonight, every crisis and battle of your life is finished. I said it's finished. No matter where you are, you're logging right now from all over the states, pay attention. Tonight, your problem is finished. Your sicknesses are finished. Infirmities finished. Your failures finished. And uh, from tonight, testimony. Testimony. I said testimony. We are going to begin this session with a song. It is finished. Let the choir people come up and sing for us. It is finished. And you are going to say to yourself, the troubles of my life, the afflictions of my life, the pursuit of the enemy, the powers of darkness, the oppressions of my life, the failures of my life, it is finished. Amen. 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 We listen to the choir.
from all over the states. I need a thunderous amen from you. Amen. amen. Before we get into the final, final, final part of this breakthrough, the final leg of this deliverance, 
the final part of your liberation. Hear me. Somebody spoke with me today, one of the pastors. God opened his eyes and gave him a revelation. According to him, he said he saw me and all of you, the church, with trumpets in our hands, singing the song of victory with jubilation. You are victorious already. You are victorious already. You are victorious already. It is your yokes are gone. Your troubles are gone. God met with Moses and said, Moses, go to Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Four word statements. Let my people go. And we came tonight to declare to the devil, to declare to the forces and the powers of darkness, every force of forces that have been over you, after you, we are sounding them the notice from the throne of grace. Let my people go. Every deposit of the devil in your life. We are say, saying unto them, let my people go. Every barrier to progress, to success, to promotion, we are declaring tonight, let my people go. In Exodus chapter 5, verse 1, God said there, let my people go. In Exodus chapter 7, verse 16, let my people go. In Exodus chapter 8, verse 1, let my people go. In Exodus chapter 8, verse 20, let my people go. In chapter 8, verse 21, let my people go. I think the devil has gotten enough warning. In chapter 9, verse 1, let my people go. In chapter 9, verse 13, let my people go. In chapter 10, verse 3, let my people go. And finally, in chapter 10, verse 4, if thou refuse to let my people go, Behold, tomorrow will I bring the locusts into thy coast. Eventually, the devil, represented by Pharaoh, Pharaoh, representing the devil, refused. And then in chapter 12, the final, final, final finishing of Pharaoh, Finishing of Nebuchadnezzar, finishing of the powers of darkness, finishing of the works of the devil came. Chapter 12, verse 14. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. I will pass through. This is the God of heaven speaking. The maker of your life speaking. You've been waiting upon the Lord. From the beginning of this year up to today, and the Lord wants me to tell you tonight, tonight, the Lord is passing through your family, the Lord is passing through your body.